Hey, Daryl. Hey, Jim. How's everything going? Peachy keen, buddy. Peachy keen. All right. All right. <laughs> Trevor. Hey, we have all of last week's group here. All we need is one more and we were growing. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to uh, promote online today and I have just had, I've not had five minutes between calls to make a post. Uh, so hopefully we have some people show up, but we need to start um, growing these um, yeah. meetups by making some posts throughout the week and letting people know uh, what they missed and what we've got going on. Yeah. So. Well, I was going to have a presentation today uh, to bring to the committee, but after further review, I, I decided not to bring them <clears throat> because I don't, the numbers, I, I just don't understand. Um, <clears throat> I know Dallas is a very active market. I, I looked into it. I pulled numbers on it. So I know Dallas is active and, and, and stuff like that. Matter of fact, Dallas uh, cap rate is, is running about four and a half. So this individual had a 1968 building and he want, he, he's trying to get it for 3.59 cap. And trying to, and, and then on disposition, sell it below market cap, which is four and a half, and wants to say that it's an A class property when it's not. Well, and it's kind of hard to be A class if you're 1968. Right. Well, that's, that's possible, was, but it's awfully hard. Well, that I was explaining to him what justification do you have in order for in order to bring this before the group what justification do you have to show this i said let me see your your comps his comps two of his tabs had a class comps 2015 16 300 plus units and he had a 68 unit then he had a he had another tab with B class properties, 300 units plus. And I said, I'm telling him you can't pull 300 plus units comparing it to a 68 unit. Can't do that. Um, his cash on cash when I underwrote it was uh, one point something. <laughs> And and he didn't he couldn't tell me what the cash on cash was, but I told him sorry, but you need to go back and uh, redo this because yeah. I said there's, I said there's no way I could bring this before the committee. They will laugh at me and tell me that. Well, you know what, Daryl, <laughs> you can you can bring it before the committee and let him uh, get input from three or four or five other people that says, look. Here's the criteria, minimum criteria that you need to meet in order to get a deal funded. And we've got our checklist and you only, our checklist is 20 items long. You didn't hit three of them. Right. You know, so you're missing 17, number one. Uh, and here's the things that we see. We're not being vindictive. We're not trying to be harsh, but uh, you can't compare X to A you know, you've got to compare X to Y and Z, the things that are right next to you that are similar to you. So yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, turn him down. Let him come on, and, and you know, we'll uh, we'll train him up. Okay, all right then. That's a winner. Yeah, that's a winner. But in the, but in the meantime, we've got uh, five people here. I don't know what happened to John. We, but uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll hold a small accountability group uh, here. Uh, to see what we're all working on, what we want to work on. Um, from an accountability standpoint, I'm going to turn this over to Trevor because I want, Trevor has been part of another accountability group here for a while and uh, it's um, uh, a paid accountability group. So I want him to maybe uh, give us an idea of what they are doing so that we can replicate that and give him a better free version of the same thing. No. 
I mean, yes, but no. <laughs> You're coming across like I could hear a squeaky little something. Okay, how Try I disconnecting and reconnecting your uh, microphone, Trevor. See if that works. Is that better? No, still very, very faint. Uh, are you try uh, try connecting to the um, uh, to the computer audio instead of your microphone? Uh, I don't know why, but sometimes in Zoom that works for me. How about now? Same, just very faint. Very faint. Okay. Um, um, you can go into your Zoom settings and see if the volume level for your microphone is set to very, very low. Yeah, let me try that real quick. Hey, Sonia. Yes, yeah, select microphone. Same. I was waiting for the color to come in. <laughs> Do what? I was waiting for the color to come in. I scared myself. Oh. <laughs> How about now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're there. What did you do? Um, I uh, adjusted the input volume. Okay, all right. And on uh, from Zoom or on your system tray? On my system. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, it's working now. So I don't know. Maybe Zoom is set to like one. Uh, okay. So I checked that also. You can do that with that little carrot by the microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go up, it says... Um, microphone and i think you can test yeah audio settings right at the very okay. bottom but anyway you're okay now so we're good to go so sonia uh trevor's going to share with us some ideas uh about how we might be able to make this meeting a little more productive hey chris um and uh and more engaging he's oh, been paying fantastic. for a uh, an accountability group that meets every week but mainly they cover underwriting. But uh, I'm going to turn it over to Trevor and let him just kind of uh, give us an update on that, what it looks like, any suggestions, any ideas uh, about how we can make this a more engaging uh, group every week. All right. Thank you, Jim. Um, so what I, from my understanding, this, so this group I joined, it's um, the, my first million in multifamily deal room. And the reason I joined that one was because there were you know, thousands of members of their not paid group. And there wasn't a lot of activity going on. And something that attracted me to the deal, the, their deal room uh, paid group at first was something that they would do called a deal sprint was, and I, I haven't done it yet. That's what attracted me to it. They're signing, I think they're signing up for it right now. Um, but from my understanding is that you would get teamed up with a few, like two or three other people and you would kind of post your goals for the next eight weeks and meet with each other once or twice throughout the week to see like what you were doing and trying to take down, take down a deal together and, you know, making sure you're staying on top of those goals. So that's kind of what attracted me to that, to that paid group. Um, but what was interesting when I went to the first underwriting, uh, the, they also on Tuesdays at the same time have an underwriting group um, similar to the Tuesday morning one. And I went to that one and I was actually kind of surprised because a lot of the deals that they were bringing up, a lot of people hadn't done uh, good research on them. And they would say, oh, did you check this out? The person would say, no, did you check, you know, did you check this? The person would say no. Whereas the one with the GOB network on Tuesday morning, which I attended this last week, it was a really high quality with good input and people had done their homework with the underwriting. So when, uh, and I haven't formed anything official, but I'm thinking with accountability group, we could do something like a deal sprint. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to uh, get more involved and help out. Um, I, I could certainly do a much better job, but I kind of was like thinking of this group in terms of, oh no, like you got a deal that you guys are really going to move forward, but now the lie in, and we're going to like, you know, give you another pair of eyes right before you do that or something like that. But, you know, if there's also value in people learning underwriting or just maybe being exposed to like different markets, um, you know, I, I'm underwriting anywhere from like five to 10 deals a week right now. Uh, I'm getting overwhelmed because I think another five deals just got sent to me today. Um, so in terms of if, if we need a deal to underwrite, I, I have a number that 
um, I'm ha I've done a, a full on write on, so I'm happy to like run through and, and, you know, maybe someone in here could see something that they have a, a unique, um, advantage, uh, in that market. And maybe the deal doesn't work for, for me, for my team, but it works for, for someone else. And so I just kind of want to put that out there, you know, if, if um, if we, if we want to go through a deal, um, I, I certainly have, have deals to, to help yeah. walk through. Two things, Chris, uh, which uh, underwriting spreadsheet are you working with? Uh, most of the time it's been with the, the Michael Blanc model. I'm trying to convert over to the synthesis, uh, the Chris Jackson one. Um, but most of it has just been in the Michael Blanc. Just, and it's not, I, I, I like, I like it because I know where everything is, right. but I also had to build out a number of different tabs in there to do what I want to do. Uh, cause I, my background is in, uh, finance and mergers and acquisitions and modeling. And so I've kind of had to like build out and make it into what I want it to be. Um, but at least like from a base standpoint, I know where everything is and yeah, it's it out of place. Yeah. And remind me again, Chris, where do you live? Uh, I'm in Philadelphia. In Philly. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to propose something. This meeting right now is pretty small. Uh, we don't have too many people coming regularly. We've got seven people on here right now. We've got New Jersey, um, New York, uh, Chicago, two people from, from the greater New York area, two people from the greater Chicagoland area, one person from California, one per person from Washington State, and one person from Philly. I would like to challenge everyone to bring a deal next week, um, something less than 20 units, and see if we could buy it just among seven people. Something close to home and um, something that I don't care if it's 10 units or less, I don't care what we pay for it. Meaning I would like to buy something next week if it's 10 units or less, even if we overpay by 10%, I'd like to buy it next week. Whether it's in Philly, Chicago, the greater New York, New Jersey area, California, or Washington State. Hmm. That's my challenge to you guys. And then I think we can hold ourselves accountable by, did we bring a deal for each of us to look at? So our goal next week, um, well, and, and so I'm already going to amend. Our goal next week wouldn't be to buy it. Our goal next week would be to look at at least uh, one, two, three, at least three deals, preferably uh, four deals. So if we can find a deal that's 20 units or less before next week, I'd like for us to compare those deals and then put in an LOI for all of them, whether it's three that we look at or four that we look at. And then the next week, if we didn't successfully win that deal, do whatever's necessary to win that deal. If it's a 20 unit and we're looking in the outskirts and I'll give you another very strong suggestion. Let's not look in our immediate backyard, but let's look at, and Trevor, you, are, you and I have already discussed this. Let's look at a USDA approved lending area that's closest to us. I guarantee you, we can find a USDA property that's less than 30 minutes from where you live. And what that does for us is it gives us a hundred percent loan. We don't have to capital raise. Okay. So we can take down that property, have seven owners. So somebody needs to be secretary tonight and make sure we know we have the same seven owners. Um, and let's buy that property. And a month from now, I want to have a property. I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines and not owning something. And it doesn't, if we buy a 10 unit property and we buy one every month, guess what? We're going to have 120 units at the end of the year. And we'll 1031 those into a huge property. 
but we need to get off the snide. Question. I got everyone's name. What'd you say, Wayne? So <clears throat> what's the method to your madness, even if we overpay? So in a five-year business plan on a small deal, mm -hmm. if you overpay by 10 or 20 percent, you've got to make up maybe 40 or 50 thousand dollars over five years. It's pretty easy to do. Okay. So for you, Wayne. You'd be looking, uh, there's USDA areas all around Chicago. Yeah. South of you, um, um, I'm not thinking as far south as Rantoul. What's that bit, the city that the Bears used to have a spring practice in directly south on 57? Uh, Kankakee. It was Kankakee. Kankakee. Okay. Did they, use, did they used to be there a long time uh, ago? I, I remember. It, um... Or was it somebody else? Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Kankakee, I think, is a USDA lending area. So you don't need to get very far from home. You could get into Indiana, certain parts of Lake County, um, you know, around St. John and, and um, um, uh, Dyer, uh, just south of those areas, south of Crown Point, west of even Chesterton, Wayne, is, even though Chesterton and Valpo are pretty big cities now. You know, those are bedroom communities for, for Chicago. Those are probably USDA lending areas. Okay. So anything in the USDA, USDA lending area, let's see if we can find a property. You know, be, now you're not gonna engage a broker fast enough to do this. So what I'm gonna tell you is you're gonna need to pre, you're gonna need to prime a broker. So for you, Wayne, I would prime a couple of people that we already know are on the Facebook uh, GOB group that are already posting deals, small deals in Indiana and in, in, in and around Chicago. Mm -hmm. But even if it's a deal in Cal City, I don't, you know, that's a little bit different, but I'll even accept that. But I would like to see USDA so we don't have to raise any money. And uh, uh, Andrew would be one of those people for you to reach out to because he's posting deals all the time. Okay. And, Andrew, um, what's his last name? Oh, yeah, I don't remember. Just look on the Facebook group. Uh, he okay. posts deals all the time. Okay. I think I know you talked about He was on, um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got you. Okay. I'll, I'll check him down. Okay. All right. And uh, did you get the card of that young lady from CIC at our Christmas party? No, no, no. We, we talked. I, I never did uh, uh, meet okay. up with her. All right. Uh, I want you to, have you got a pen handy? Yep. Go right ahead. I want you to do something. I want you to reach out to her. And if you would, I would mm -hmm. like for you to say, hey, I'm working with Jim Biggs. He asked me to call you and set up a meeting. Her name is Catherine Elmore. Her phone number is, her cell phone number is 312-725-8067. Uh -huh. And her email address is Catherine k-a-t-h-e-r-i-n-e -E dot elmore e-l-m-o-r-e -E, at c-i-c chicago dot com tell her that our mission our missions and vision are aligned and that jim wants to work with you and help you guys get more deals done and also wants to mentor all of the people that need more balance sheet. He's willing to offer his balance sheet to get more deals done with local people and set up a meeting for the three of us. Okay. Okay. I could do that. All right. I'm on. And, and remind me when that meeting is set to invite everyone on this call plus Mark Caesar. Okay. Okay. And Daryl, if you know of anyone else that um, wants to operate in that space, um, I know there's a couple other people that want to operate in that space. Um, CIC Chicago serves um, underserved communities. Every bank that it has a national charter in the United States has to set aside a certain amount of money for underserved communities. And CIC Chicago goes to every one of those banks and says to them, look, that's our expertise. That's our wheelhouse. If you want, we'll take that money and place it for you. And the banks, are glad to give it to them because they're not good at it. 
and they get to serve their charter and keep their federal charter and CIC redistributes that money. There's an organization similar to CIC Chicago in every major city in the United States. Okay, so I want to do USDA, but we're also going to start reaching out to CIC Chicago, maybe pick up some assets that way too. Okay. Um, hey, Jim. Um, yeah. I've never heard the uh, term USDA, uh, you know, eligible. I'm looking it up here and it requires me to do some reading, but I want to pay attention. Uh, can you briefly just, uh, uh, yeah. just say what that, so, what that is? Trevor, you, uh, you and I have already had this discussion, so if you could, uh, <laughs> Sorry, look Wayne. at the email that you sent me for your homework last week, where you did the map and the uh, USDA uh, loan for apartments. Can you post those two links in the chat? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, so basically, Jim, uh, USDA is uh, like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, but for rural areas, they're for farming communities. They loan on houses and on uh, farmland and on apartment buildings in rural communities. And outside the VA, they are the only government-backed agency that will give you a 100% loan. Now, it's not a blanket 100% loan. We know that. You're going to have to qualify. There's going to be uh, you know, stipulations. But in essence, it's going to be the closest thing we can get to a loan that we don't have to capital raise on. OK? Uh, but they only loan in certain areas. So Trevor is going to post a map, a USDA map, uh, that shows you where those areas are. And you're going to be shocked at how close they are to where you live. Uh, also, who's sharing the screen right now? Trevor, is that you or Daryl? I think it's Daryl. So, uh, there, Daryl, are you sh sharing the uh, USDA apartment uh, loan site? Sorry about that. I thought I was unmuted. Uh, yeah, this is uh, it's the loan multifamily oh, yeah. housing loan guarantees. So, and... can you paste that in the chat, Daryl? Sure. If you didn't already. So it's important to know, guys, that the regular USDA uh, loan site is just for single family. They have an entirely separate site for multi-family multi loans. And Daryl has it right here. But their lending area, the map, is the same for single family and multi-family. Trevor, uh, were you able to find it already? Yep, I just uh, posted both of those links um, in, in the, the chat. chat. Okay. And I did some research on it and yeah. it was said they'll fund up to 90%. Um, I actually, it was interesting because I, I found a deal that was intriguing and I was looking at it through the lens of the USDA loan program. And it says, um, I was researching a lender and they said, you have to basically apply to apply and then pay $2,000 to apply. And then they'll get back to you within 90 to 120 days. So our once we identify the areas and we identify an apartment building, the next thing, and, and, and really it's not the next thing, simultaneously, we need to find out who the most active USDA lender is in our backyard. So um, Wayne, for us, there's a guy that lives out in Laporte who's very, very active. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't remember, but just uh, on LinkedIn, or if you Google USDA lender, Laporte, Indiana, his name will pop up. And that's what I would do each one of you guys. USDA lender, South New Jersey, USDA lender, uh, New York proper, um, you know, USDA lender, um, Seattle. And California, I'm sorry, Sonia. <laughs> and guys, let's, let's agree to, we can agree to disagree, but I'd like to agree Let's drop this idea that California is not a good place to invest. It's an absolutely you. phenomenal place to invest. You hear that, Daryl? There is so much big, big, big money that wants to invest in every major city in Los Angeles. California is the fifth largest economy in the world. It's like a freaking country. Fourth. Fourth? I'm Fourth. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bad boy. <laughs> so, you know, it's a great place to invest. Do I want to invest in San Francisco, California, or Los Angeles, or Sacramento? Well, maybe Sacramento, uh, San Diego, 
Probably not. Can we find a great deal in San Francisco? I bet you we can. I bet you we can. I Sacramento. bet you find, yeah, for sure, Sacramento. But yeah. I bet you, even in San Francisco, we can find a slumlord that's just beaten the, pardon my French, beaten the shit out of a piece of property. <laughs> and we can buy it and turn it back, make it a nice place to live, comfortable, clean, well-maintained, not super, super, super nice with granite and stainless, but clean, livable, and very, very um, affordable by San Francisco standards and make a lot of money. So, you know, but my interest in California would be the USDA areas. Right. And, that would be and, like San Gabriel Valley or, I mean, yep. San, San Bernardino on the outskirts. Yep. Okay. Yep. On the outskirts of all the major cities. Okay. And, uh, and prices will be super cheap compared yeah. to inside the major cities. So I'm not afraid of buying in San Francisco. And Sonia, we have a lot of people that are on the network that live in San Francisco. So if we yeah. get this done, if we have to raise a little bit of money, those people will be on board. Right. And if they're I'm not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to California and get them on board. <laughs> I'm seeing some, some shore towns as well. Mm -hmm. uh, down, down here on the Jersey Shore, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. seeing some shore towns being wide open. Uh, there's a couple of like growth pockets uh, not far from the winery. Well, actually, like all around the winery. Um, you know, there's there's some areas here that look pretty decent in surrounding Philadelphia, or I would say a little bit outside of that. But yeah, um, you know, I would say probably within a half hour outside of Philadelphia. There's some so, so that's our that's our goal for next week, right? We're gonna try to identify three or four properties that we can all uh, bring to the table. Uh, I'm um, and Chris, I, I want to move the agenda to your winery. Can you talk to us about um, your ownership position in the winery? How long you've owned it? How much of it you own? How yeah. you got into it? Oh yeah, right now. Um, yeah. So uh, quickly, how I got into it uh, in 2013, um, I was interested in lifestyle businesses, and uh, this one just happened to po post on Facebook uh, from one of my friends' uh, moms, who's a realtor. Um, and uh, it turns out it's like a one town over from my hometown. Um, at that point, I had no experience in uh, drinking wine. I've been to Napa one time uh, for work, and uh, just stopped in. Uh, shook hands with the owner uh, and uh, my friend backed out I decided to um, to volunteer whilst the owner tried to sell uh, and, and just to see if it was something that I really wanted to do and commit to so I picked up a couple of books on wine chemistry how to make wine uh, they had a 10 year old vineyard they just never had started they had everything tasting room uh, five acres of vineyard 10 years old producing they had uh, maybe like 25 oak barrels um, with product in that. Um, I dumped like 90% of that, um, but I just kind of played around for a couple of months uh, after my W-2 job. And um, by the end of the summer, I had three wines and uh, went back to the owner, approached him and said, uh, you know, hey, I know you really started this up as a family business. You just never could get it over the goal, goal line. Let's partner, I'll make the wine you run the tasting room um, and uh, we'll see if we can make this thing work. And so open small business Saturday in 2013. Um, we've scaled up, I think in 2019, we were at like, like 350,000 in revenue. 2020, we got up to 550,000 in revenue, even with the pandemic. And then in 2021, I think we got near 700, uh, between 650 and 700,000 in, in revenue. Um, and, uh, I made one mistake and, and so I'm still, still making the wine there. I, I do delegate a lot. Um, and I don't have to physically be there all the time doing all the work that I was too labor intensive for me. <laughs> um, now it's just more of the strategy, the, the, oh, I show up to make the final blends and, you know, do the taste testing to make sure that, you know, 
the wines are going in the right direction that I want them to, to age in. Mm. Um, so all the, all the fun stuff, right. Delegate to like younger, uh, people who are hungry to do all the heavy lifting stuff. And now I just show up to taste test, make sure everything's going, be more strategic, uh, more high value and stuff. Um, uh, but I originally got into the deal by, um, doing a percentage of revenue and we had, um, you know, percentage of equity. So it was really putting in my, my sweat equity up front for those first couple of years. I wasn't married. My wife was in Boston. I had nothing better to do, uh, other than work my day job and put all my nighttime into to growing this business. Um, and then in 2016, I, I wanted to scale faster and I didn't see the winery getting that big based on its location and based on how we were bootstrapping it uh, and scaling financially. And it was very slow. We're just, you know, uh, just basically taking that net income and rolling it back in and trying to scale s- slowly. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to get a financial partner. So we brought in a financial partner um, who had uh, different ideas uh, than the, uh, you know, my original owner partner uh, and they just butted heads constantly. And so when that financial partner came in, um, I had equity in the company and I exited because I thought, ah, you know what? I want to quickly monetize this and continue to invest in real estate. So let me just take that quick hit of cash and pull that out and move on. And I'll just stay on as like a consultant. Well, it turns out that partnership didn't work out. I had to come back in um, to take over the winemaking again uh, in 2016. And um, so essentially I brought in a financial partner and uh, <laughs> took the, the first exit, got out and uh, had to come back in. Um, but I don't have uh, the equity in the business uh, that I had before. Um, they kind of just continued to pay me, um, a consulting fee plus, a um, it's kind of like off the record, but they continue to pay me out because they feel bad that, uh, um, you know, I, I got out at that time. So it's kind of, it's kind of nice, but I guess the one thing is I can't really use it from like a balance sheet perspective, but, um, it is nice to kind of get those, uh, monthly payments, um, kind of oh. like a, so Chris, to transition very quickly from a cost segregation standpoint, did you guys ever use cost segregation on the winery? No, it was something I had no idea about back in 2013. Okay. Um, we did so spend we, a lot of X dollars last, last year. So that it could have worked last year, probably. Yeah. So businesses that have really high cost segregation, uh, think of a parking lot. Uh, mm-hmm. The entire thing is, is almost... 100% written off because it's just a parking lot. It's just pavement. It's written yep. off in five years. Uh, a winery, my guess is, also has a very high cost segregation. It's probably a very favorable, I don't know, but uh, my guess is very, very, very favorable um, cost segregation um, toward, uh, toward the winery because of it's just land. And then the plants are all written off, I'm guessing, in a five-year um time frame yeah we bought a tanks uh last year and i think all of those should probably have a depreciation schedule under yeah. 15. yeah and so it's very efficient i think from a cost segregation standpoint uh more importantly it's a really fun business model uh, oh, yeah. i wouldn't want to be on an east coast winery i would really like to be find something that's a mom and pop that's distressed um in sonoma or um you know, somewhere in, in Northern California. So think, with your expertise, Chris, and Sonia's location, I would love to see if we could find a winery uh, to put on this list. A there small, are a very yeah, small there are, there are ones out there um, because I've been uh, approached sometimes we'll have to, you know, if our inventory, if we're low inventory or we had a bad growing season, sometimes I'll have to bring in stuff from California, Washington, and Oregon. So I've got some relationships out there and I've been approached, I think in Oregon and Washington, um, there's been some wineries up, up for sale. Okay. Um, 
so there, there's definitely possibilities out there. And I think if, you know, depending on your view of climate change, I think considering up to Oregon and Washington long term, it makes a lot of sense yeah. um, from a climate and standpoint. And we've got a lot of connections in both of those places that uh, I think would be very interested in the asset class. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would definitely want to pursue that also. Um, and now we have a group of seven. We have to make a decision. Do we want to allow Neil in on this? So Neil came in late. Yeah, my fault. I thought it was at six my time. And then I saw Daryl's post yeah. at five. So well, I thought I would I, check I in. So I'm out. I'm out. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Neil's wearing a US, he's wearing a USA hockey uh, t-shirt. So anybody that loves hockey is okay in my book. There you go. All right. Well, I don't know. I'm going to be tougher. I'm going to be tougher. If it's not Blackhawks Black Hawks hockey, I don't know if I'm going to let him in or not. Tampa, Tampa all the way. The Lightning's all the way. Blackhawks have a few issues right now, Jim. Let's well, go Black Rangers. Hawks, are lovable losers for 90% <laughs> of their life. But when the old man passed away, we finally got, uh, finally, that's what we need to happen with the Bears. We need the old the old crew to pass away. Hey, you, you, beat, you beat my Flyers when we finally got back there. So, you know, you got that, you got that over me. Well, um, I don't know if you can see Messier here. I think we're going to have to almost uh, include Neil because he's in Phoenix. And that's a super mm. hot market. Yeah, uh, and because of that, we're going to have to grudgingly probably let him in. Well, and if we're talking wineries too, there's plenty of those in the high desert. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, in, up in the uh, northern part of the state. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but uh, but anyway, uh, Neil, we set a short-term goal of next week to find a property less than 20, 20 units or less. I don't care what the price is; price is irrelevant. We need a property that you can get into underwriting. And I'm assuming that you do some underwriting or else why come to the call? Uh, try to get a 20 unit or less property into underwriting. And if you need help, uh, Daryl, can they reach out to you if they need help? Of course. Okay. So uh, don't reach out to me. I'm not gonna be <laughs> help at all. I'll slow you down. Um, but if you need help, reach out to Daryl. The goal is by next week to have one property. I don't care. Finish the sentence for me. What it costs. What it costs. I don't care what it costs. 20 units or less. You pick it. It just needs to be for sale. Okay. The owner's willing to sell it. If you don't find anything from a local broker, what I would suggest to you is use the Google Drive Find all the apartment units in your area, 20 units or less. They're all on the Google Drive under contacts. Okay. And enlist a broker and say, look, I want you and uh, screw, screw the Google Drive at this point. Just tell the broker, I need to find a property to buy by next week. And the only criteria is 20 units or less. And it has to be within 30 minutes of where I live. That's the only criteria. Okay. I can do that. No problem. He needs to come up with a list for you within, within 48 hours. If he doesn't, I want you to call in 15 other brokers. Call your favorite broker first, give it to him. But I would say, give it to two or three or four different brokers and then consolidate the list, you know, into one list, tell them you need it in Excel format so that you can, consolidate the list, okay? Tell them you are on a very tight uh, tight time frame. You have to buy something right away. Don't tell Thank them why. You. Just tell them I've got an investor that needs to place this money right away. That's all you need to tell them, okay? Hey, Jim, do we want to be between... I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, James. I said, uh, do we want to be between five and 20 to keep it, keep it at five or better? Yeah. 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 Thank you for okay. that, John. Uh, yeah. Five, five to 20, uh, preferably. I mean, it would be nice. Yeah. Just five to 20. We'll see what comes up. Um, and, uh, next week we want to have three or four deals that we can compare and underwrite. We're going to, after that meeting, we're going to put in LOIs on every single one of them. The following week, 
we're going to try to buy one of them. And all of us are going to be partners on that deal. Now, the only caveat, Neil, that we put into it, we prefer that it be in a USDA area. Now, Neil came in late, so he's not going to see the chat. So if someone could repost the USDA map and the USDA lending area or lending site, really, you only need the map, Neil. Um, tell them. Yeah, I have it. <laughs> okay. Tell them it needs to be in that area. So something in that area that you can get to within 30 minutes. Okay. Tell them it doesn't matter if it's on market, off market, as long as the seller is willing to sell. Okay. So the goal is within 30 days, this group is going to own a property. And if we're successful at this, we'll keep doing it every week. And every month we'll add another property. And if this continues to grow to 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, we'll just keep doing it. Okay? I love the idea. I think you'll definitely grow it if you start taking down deals and, and uh, offering people that, that way in, right? <laughs> that, that'll, that'll uh, it, it's results, right? People are, people are looking for that. Well, let's make it happen. Any comments or um, commentary, questions, anything? How, how do we structure like our buying group um, as a so creative we'll, group? We'll set aside, depending on if we have to raise capital, Jim, we'll structure it in such a way that if it's 100%, then we all take an equal share. Uh, maybe give the person the deal that we buy, maybe give the person that is boots on the ground in that area a little extra because they're gonna be the point person, okay? Um, but then if we don't raise any capital, that's it, okay? If we have to raise a little bit of capital, then I don't wanna raise capital. I want each one of us to put in the capital. And then we'll share pro rata based upon how much we invest in the ownership, which means I'm gonna get next to nothing because I don't wanna keep putting capital into deals. I promised my wife I wouldn't. But that's okay with me. My big goal is to get you guys into deals. I found the six unit. <laughs> All right, I'm ready, Daryl. Underwrite the damn thing. Let's get it on the, you know, hey, don't overthink it, guys. I don't want you looking for the best deal. I just want a deal to underwrite next week. I, I, I told them earlier, I don't care if it's overpriced. That's irrelevant. The first deal you find you can underwrite, let's get the underwriting and get it in there. Let's compare it next week. And we'll keep doing this week after week after week. So I only have one question right now. Trevor, is this better than what you were paying $300 for? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> for sure. That was, a very, that was a very soft yes, but I'll take it. <laughs> Daryl, that, uh, so I've got the, uh, USDA lineup. If you go back to that screen share that you had, yeah, yeah, I was about to ask was uh, be able to you know do a demonstration on how to find properties with this uh, this USDA map and how exactly to utilize it. Yeah, what I did, I just um, this property is right by me. I know exactly where this property is. I could drive there. I've been in 15 minutes, Mount Holly, but I took the address just and I put it into the USDA map. Right here. Carol, could you demonstrate how you did that? So, because uh, sure. most of us have not ever done this before. Just so, heard of USDA. Do what? Uh -huh. Do what, Wayne? So, just heard of USDA connecting to you know multi-family. I'm, I, when, you, when I hear USDA, I'm thinking me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'm a realtor, so I knew about the USDA. That's that's how I knew about it. But what I did once I, um, let me go back here. Once I got the address. I went to the USDA map, right? And I just typed in the address, uh, 84 uh, Pine Street, Mount Holly, New Jersey. And then I just hit go and it, and it came up and it said this address is located in an eligible area. So it's eligible for USDA. So Daryl, could you do another address that is not sure. eligible? 
that's not eligible. Okay, so no. let me pick. Uh, give me one second. Anything in in the city? Let me see. Let me try Camden. Camden probably is not. Um, but you're so using CoStar. We're using CoStar. We can't use that. Well, hold on a second, Sonia. We're going to get to that here in just a second. Yeah. So 525 Penn Street in Camden, right? Uh, hold on a second. So we're going to go to 525 Penn Street, Camden, New Jersey. Penn Street. Right? And then hit go. And then the map will take you there. So it's not going to say anything. Uh, this oh, yeah, address yeah. is not located in an eligible area. There you go. So then the next question is, Daryl, how did you find that property? How do we find property addresses to put into the map? Okay, so you're going to, there's, you're going to have to get with a broker um, because okay. you know, uh, commercial right. brokers are going to have coast off. Or, right. or but let me also tell you, now for the smaller units, you're going to have to do some educating now. If, if you're willing to do a little bit of educating, you could probably get a good property. Go to your, you can ask the residential agents because they're hungry for a commercial and ask them to look in the MLS because the MLS will have multifamily properties, five, six units. And and I could even demonstrate that if we have the time, because I got bright MLS and there's a section there where I could pull up commercial multifamilies, even in bright MLS. So here's another way. You guys, do you know how to populate a Google map? Yes or no? Give me a yes or a no. The populate. Uh, yeah. put, drop a set of pins onto oh. a Google map. 15 yeah. or 20 pins. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. I'm not familiar with that. I, think I, did, I tried it once and I think it did. I haven't done it before, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. Anybody yeah. that has done it that will, is willing to screen share and demonstrate? Well, just dropping a pin, I believe I know what you're referring to. Yeah. All right. So you can take the contact list from uh, the Google Drive in your area, you pull up the USDA map and you, um, you can drop all the pins onto a Google map and then pull up the USDA map. So you have two different maps on your screen. Mm -hmm. One is the USDA boundary. The other is all the pins that you dropped onto the Google map from the Google Drive of contacts of all units, 20 units or less. All of the things that seem to be within the map, you want to call somebody in that area and ask them to reach out to that owner and see if they would be open to accepting an offer to buy their property. You don't want to do it yourself because you'll be calling 500 people over the next seven days. Okay. So enlist an agent, give them their cut to call all those people for you. You can even share your map with them and say, I want you to call every one of these people. So I will try to demonstrate. Um, I am horrible at this. So if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it. <laughs> so let me go to share screen. And my computer is going to run extremely slow. Yeah, many Christmas. It took it that long just to share screen. All right, so you guys can see me talking to my son. Tell him to check his transmission fluid. Um, and of course, don't judge me. You know I always have 137 apps open. Um, we're gonna go to oh, the GOB network. GOB network, uh, contacts list. Everybody with me? Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to go with the contacts. And Wayne, we're going to work in the Chicagoland area, okay? 
All right. Uh, and, and I'm glad you brought this up because I was going to uh, ask you within the contacts list, the majority of the contacts don't have where they are located. I'm going back to what you said uh, as far as posting, uh, the, the, putting something on Slack and, and tagging the folks you know, in the Chicagoland area. But most, at least the, the, maybe I was looking at the wrong list, but the majority of the contacts did not have where they actually stayed within the country. Okay, so you see where I am up here? Mm -hmm. I'm in the GOB network of apartment investors. I'm under contact list. Okay, let me go back here. This is the main directory. First start here. The very second one's contact list. Then within the contact list, I'm gonna come down here to multifamily owner contacts by MSA. With me? Okay. I would encourage you guys, if you have your computer open, just follow along, open these tabs yourself so you know where they are and you can bookmark them if you need to. So I'm gonna open that. And then I'm going to go to Illinois. And I'm going to go to the Chicago MSA. I'm on Chicago MSA open. All right. These are two units or less, three units or less, three units, three units, four units, four units, four units, five units, six units. Um, we, we need to do all of these. But because it's Chicago, there's going to be a shitload of them. Uh, but let's just let's just concentrate on um, uh, let's just concentrate on on twelve units. So we'll need to download these these three files, okay? But we're just going to pick one of them. Twelve units or less. That's going to open up a list, okay? And then I need to remember. Let's see, I'm going to open up Maps, Google Maps. And if I'm doing it wrong, one of you correct me because I'm about a bottle and a half into my Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, Google Maps. You have to be logged in to Google Maps, okay? So you have to make sure you're logged in. And then you come over here and click on that, and you're going to say your places. Let me see here. Yeah. So your places, and it's going to say list, labeled, visited, and maps. And I think what we want are maps. And then we're going to create a map. With me so far? Okay. With me so far? Yep. yep. I got one. Yeah, yeah. Yep, you're good. Yeah, see? Four. Yep. Five. Yep. Six. Yes. Seven. Okay. Create the map. Uh, import. Okay. So we're going to import from the Google Drive. Now we could just drag it here. So let's say, as an example, I had downloaded it. Show in folder. I have not downloaded it. So let's try to go back to that and download it. We're just gonna download this one, okay? So I right click on it and then I'm gonna say download. It's gonna show up here. I'm gonna say save if it's in where I want it to be, which it is. And then I'm gonna go back to the Google Maps. Let's get rid of this. Where's it at? Where are you? I feel like I'm talking to my grandson. Henry, where are you? Okay, yes. so we had the maps. Uh, one more over, create the map. I'm gonna open up this folder and I'm gonna drag that into here. Oh. And then it wants you to choose the columns for your place marks. Now I'm probably gonna screw this up, okay? But I'm gonna click <laughs> all of them. Um, I think you can just include one of them like uh, address. Right. Let's just do that. Let's just do address. Uh, I'm gonna leave city and state. Okay, I'm just gonna choose address city state and continue. Everybody with me? 
Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes. Continue. Property name, property address. I, it, it wants to name the file. And since the file probably doesn't have ABC apartments, it's we're just going to call it by its address, which is unique for each property, right? Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All bullshit. If, you, if you're hearing bullshit, <laughs> All right, now it's working. This is not, I've never uh, run across anything like this before. I didn't know this was possible. Paid, you've never paid $100,000 for a program that's like this. <laughs> I got you, Wayne. <laughs> yeah. So this map is untitled. So we could call this, I clicked on untitled, and we can call this Chicago 12 unit. Number one. And why are we calling it number one, right, Wayne? Uh, well, we're going to be uh, creating some more maps after this one, I would assume. There were three other 12 unit maps just like this. Oh, so oh within the file. Okay. 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 So that's number one. Mm -hmm. These are imported all the maps. These are all the 12 units that are, are in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So now, Let's say, Wayne, we wanted to target this one over here in Valpo. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to zoom in, see what all, there's, it looks like there's more than one in Valpo. And why are we targeting Valpo, folks? What do we say about, let me. Let USDA. Me, is it a rural area? There you go, Daryl. The major city, Chicago, is not USDA. Right. Out here on the edges is possibly USDA. USDA. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna target Valparaiso, Indiana, which is part of the Chicagoland MSA. And we're gonna zoom in on those two properties and we get 603 Union Street. We get the property ID, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let me close that. But you said 603 Union Street? Yeah. All right, hold on one minute. Here at 603 52 College Avenue. Union Street. This one here is right next to Valparaiso College, which is a private college, which is an ideal location. But is it in the USDA map? So, Daryl, are you putting it in right now to find out? Yeah, it says um, 603 Union Street. We are unable to locate an exact address. Try 52 College Avenue in Valpo, okay. Indiana. 52 C O L L E G E College Avenue. Valparaiso and where is, and where is that located? Can you do just zip code, Daryl, or do you need? Yeah, let's try zip code. 46383. Okay, let's see what that says. This uh, address is not located in an eligible area. Okay. So we have to get outside Valparaiso. So this one and the other one are not going to work for USDA. That doesn't mean we automatically discount them, but I would rather us find something that's USDA. Okay. But the Valparaiso is a great, 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 great area. That not so good, huh, Jim? <laughs> not so good. <laughs> the median household income, I'm guessing, in Valpo is going to be 70, 80,000. Jim, can you can you touch on that address, that building that's by um, Bridge, Bridgeview, by, Bridge by above be, Oak Lawn. Bridgeview, Bridgeview and Oak Lawn will not be USDA, Daryl. Yeah, sure. too close they, to the city. Yeah, hey, Daryl, Daryl, what did you put in? Well, I'm, I'm looking what you, at what? I'm looking at your I'm looking at your USDA map. Okay, do you have any property up there? Hold on a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any property up there? That's in Elwood, Beecher, Boone Grove, Morgan. Hold on, that's uh, south of the city. Hold on. Beecher in um, here. We got South Holland. I don't think that's far enough south, Daryl. You uh, said south. Linwood, oh, south. Lin oh, that's the sports center. These Now notice, guys, you got green, gray, and blue. But these unidentified blue, those are your buildings. Okay, you see that? Yeah, not, mm -hmm. not Meyer, not Whole Foods. 
if this is in the USDA, I'm going to be shocked. I'm going to be shocked. Yeah, me too. But we'll check it. What's that? 1369, 1369 River. River Drive. 369 River Drive. Yeah, that's in Cal City. There's no and, way. And, and, what, and what's that zip code? Uh, 60409. You'd be better off, Daryl, pulling up the USDA map and giving me some cities to look for. And okay. if some of these are um, in those cities and, and let me know if you're starting on the south side, west side or north side. Like okay. these, Darryl, these are definitely in USDA. These are definitely in USDA. This. Um, totally it's probably no, what that last one say, Daryl. Uh, it, it's not. It's not in a, a USDA area. No, this one's not going to be either. But I'm trying to find things for Wayne. Uh, Wayne, let's let's just go out here. I know that's a that's a long drive for you, but um, what a, in the area of Aurora? That's yeah. Yeah, that that is not that's not too bad. All right, let's check this one here, Daryl. Okay. Uh, we've got four or five in Sugar Grove. Um. Let's try 20, 20, 2035 20, best place. Best place. No, that's not going to be because it's in Aurora, 60506. Aurora has about five zip codes. It's possible, but I doubt it. Best place. And what's the zip code there? 60506. 60506. Nope. Nope, it's not. Okay. Let's try. I think that's still in Aurora. Yeah, that's still in Aurora. That ain't gonna work. Uh, let's zoom back out. Question. Yeah. Go ahead. So there's no outline on the USDA page where it gives you what is you no know, what's within their boundaries and what isn't. We're constantly yes, trying to figure, find something yes. within them. They don't give an outline. Yes, they do. So Daryl, yeah. you want to screen share real quick the USDA? Oh, sure. Uh, hold, yep, I'll so do it right now. Here are definitely USDA, just so you guys know. The USDA map, my guess, is going to come right along 47, Daryl, uh, Wayne. Oh, I can't share a screen. Huh? I can't share the screen. You, you still, oh, you, you're out. still in it. Okay. All right. You got it? Yep. Okay, here we go. All right. And while Daryl's pulling that up, Chris, do you still get uh, discounts? Like, uh, can you, if you wanted to private label a wine, and buy by the barrel, could you get a really good price? Um, can you repeat that? I want to do a private label GOB wine to give okay. investors and members. Can you, do you have a connection that could get me a really, really, really uh, cheap price by the barrel? And we could private label the wine and send it to folks, one or two or three in a case. Yeah, I don't think that, that would be hard. You do or don't? No, I don't think that would be be hard to do. Um, if you've got time to uh, talk about it, let me know and we'll uh, get something on the calendar. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I jumped on your calendar, I think, uh, next Friday. Okay. Um, you know, I mean... I could even make a barrel. Actually, I do have. Okay. Yeah, I've got some ideas there. Okay. I'll there sample it for everyone if you want me to. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So this is the USDA map. Yeah. So now, the first Jim, one was Valpo. Jim, you, you see this area right here, this color? Yeah. That's not eligible. It's ineligible. So we got to yeah. be out here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Got you. So, all right. So see DeKalb up here, uh, Daryl. You can't see my screen. Show. Put your put your cursor. Yep. Yeah, right there, Daryl. So we had five or six right there. So they may or may not be eligible. So if we switch back to the other screen, I don't know a way to overlay. There is a way. I just don't know how to do it. And, and if somebody can figure it out by Googling it, remember when I showed you my maps, it showed you an overlay was one of the choices. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Overlay your pins onto this map. You have to save both the maps into your Google Maps. So you guys should save like uh, this local one, Wayne. You should save this one for your maps. Okay. And then Daryl, you would do the same thing. And then when you download those 12 units, it would put the pins here and then you only search the pins that are in the white. Gotcha. Nice. Okay. And I'll tell you something, Wayne, we could go south on 57, but the real money is here. It's east to west. It's on the it's on the Reagan, the 88. Mm -hmm. Aurora and uh, uh, Iowa City. That's where I, I, if I were you, and I live out here, right where Daryl has that pen, that's where I live. Naperville, right? Right, yeah. In the, in general west area? Of Naperville. I live okay. in North Aurora, right on the Fox River. You see St. Charles, Geneva, Batavia, Aurora. Mm -hmm. There's a river that runs right there. I live on that river. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Yep. So, guys, that's Daryl. If you um, let's see, do you have this recording, Daryl, or do I have it? Or no, you have this one. Yeah, it's recording. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, remind me to download this recording, send it to everybody, so that you guys can figure out how to do this. Sounds okay. good. And uh, let's bring some properties next week with okay. underwriting. All right. Okay. At least three or four properties. Fantastic. Okay. okay, Jim. One question before you go. Yeah. Um, are you on that deal with uh, Charlie? Which one? The three eighty four. No. In Houston. No. He's probably just raising capital for it. Who's it? Uh, do you know anything else about it? It's his deal. No. No. I I'm saying no, Daryl. I shouldn't do that. I hate. I hate. I hate when people make absolute statements and I just made one. So I, you guys need to keep me in line, call me out. Um, I don't think Charlie has the capacity or ability as of yet to bring down a property that size by himself and be the main sponsor. My guess is Charlie is co-sponsoring by raising capital. That really is Charlie's specialty is really coming in. Uh, He's raised a lot of capital for um, uh, other asset classes, particularly in oil wells. Uh, and I think that's where Charlie's expertise is. Charlie's uh, partner is Kyle, and Kyle is in capital raising for private equity. So my guess is they're raising capital on this, no matter what it looks like on the face. Uh, yeah, um, it's, it's a 384-unit deal in um, Houston. I spoke with him about it. Uh, he was asking me about the MD. So I told him that um, I may have someone that could bring uh, 600000 for the EMD. So, I'm, so I underwrote the deal. I have a few questions. And um, so, you know, I thought it was under something that he had found the deal. He underwrote the deal um, and so forth. Okay. Yeah. So if you can get somebody, if the underwriting looks good to you, and you have somebody that can bring EMD, then talk to the person with the EMD and say, hey, how much of the slice can I get? Don't be embarrassed to tell me how much it is. I know it's not gonna be you know, a big slice, but how big is it? Take whatever they give you. Okay. The, the idea guys here, when you're in the early stages and you're just getting in deals, take anything they give you. Anything they give you, don't negotiate it, just take it. And then work your ass off to try to perform. Gotcha. But this deal that we're gonna buy in the next 90 days, you should make a lot more money on. Because it's, a, it's only sliced by eight. It's not gonna be sliced by 150, okay? And we, all of you can get experience. All of you put it on your SREO and we'll, we'll manage it very actively with everyone being actively involved so that you learn every aspect of it. Beautiful. 
That's right. awesome. Thank you, Jim. All right. Every, we're awesome. Everybody's clear on everybody's clear on the mission that uh yeah. we'll come back clear. Right. we got I'm homework. Clear. I'm clear. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Fantastic. All right. Hey guys. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Good night, everybody.